right, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, good. So uh, I'm Rick Moraney, the founder and CEO of Branch Out. Hopefully some of you are using Branch Out. We're the largest professional network on Facebook. And I've also been a tech entrepreneur in Silicon Valley for the last 12 years, uh, mainly in the social media and social gaming space. It's been amazing to see the uh, progression and evolution of gaming. I remember back in the 80s, I was using a Commodore 64 and an Atari. And the last four years in particular have been fascinating to watch companies like Playdom and Playfish and Crowdstar, and especially Zynga with their upcoming $20 billion IPO, what they've been able to do in such a short period by leveraging the Facebook platform. But today I want to talk about beyond the traditional social games and really talk about non-gaming companies, and that would include Branch Out, and how social gaming mechanics are applied. And right now, as you know, uh, social gaming and uh, gamification is really, really hot. So you've got all sorts of new verticals that are trying to leverage game mechanics. Everything from credit card deals, I think you probably saw what Amex is doing with Facebook deals, to, uh, to hotel rewards and frequent flyer and Foursquare and all those things. So these are verticals that typically haven't had a lot of game dynamics built in. And you know, the people out here in the audience, you guys are the experts in being able to not only do this within social games, but to new verticals as well. So let me take you back to 1999, where I started in social media. So I uh, founded my first company, Tickle. So hopefully some of you may have taken a Tickle personality test back in the day. And we were the largest personality test online. If you took a, an IQ test, that was probably on Tickle. We had about 150 million IQ test takers. And um, this is back at a different time in the internet, right? This is back in 99, 2000 time frame, before Facebook, before MySpace, before even Friendster. The way that you would share online was actually through email. You would type someone's email address, you would send them a link to a web page, and that's how they would find the content. That's how you would share that. So with a tickle test, um, people would get a result at the end, and they'd want to share that. It was a fun thing to share, but the only way to do that was email at the time. And a lot of our users were asking us for the ability to not share one, one at a time, but can I share with this with 20 friends, 40 friends, 50 friends? So we're described often as pioneers in viral marketing because back in 2000, we built the first address book importer. And that was before Gmail. That was probably your Hotmail or your Outlook. So that way we could grow not one person at a time, but 50 people at a time. That helped fuel our growth to win the Webby Award in 2002 as the fastest growing internet site in the world, and eventually reaching 200 million registered users, doing 40 million in revenue. And then we sold Tickle to Monster for just over 100 million back in 04, the time that Facebook was just starting. So we were doing all this stuff pre-Facebook. OK, so a couple lessons I want to share that I think will be interesting for you. One is that people want to have fun. Now, these are, these are games that we're talking about today, but I'm talking about really just kind of the game dynamics that you can bring into other verticals. And uh, even if it's a serious topic uh, or, or a serious business, um, you can start with fun. So as an example, when we first started Tickle back in 99, we were doing really serious tests. We had PhDs writing the anxiety test and the depression test. Well, it turned out after six months of doing that, that it didn't get viral. The reason for that, it's not that fun to tell the world how depressed you are, and it's not that fun for your friends to tell you that either. So we sat in a, uh, in a conference room in December of 99 with a whiteboard, and we said, okay, let's kind of get, get out of the Silicon Valley bubble and think about what do people in the Midwest that shop at Walmart, what are they into? And we're like, okay, babies or angels or puppies. And we're like, okay, puppies, let's do a test around dogs. And if, if it were a personality test, testing site, so based on your personality, we would, uh, that would reflect as what type of dog, right? So in December of 99, we did 1 million pages for the entire month, which sucks. And then we launched that test in January, and we did 1 million per day. Okay, and that's because we realized people want fun. And that was a lesson there. And then as more people, and we had tens and tens of millions of people on the site, then they did start to take the more serious tests like the IQ test or the Myers-Briggs. And I think we were able to entertain and also educate in that process. 
The second lesson, people want to share positive results. So that's why we built the address book importer. And, um, and now with Facebook, obviously, you can see that people want to share whether they level up or they earn a badge. They want to be able to, um, to, to share that with people. It's ego-driven. It's something that Tim talked about earlier, one of the seven deadly sins. Um, pride is one of them, and you want to be able to share that. And we had 150 million people that could have been sharing their IQ test uh, if, uh, if we had the Facebook platform available back then. Okay, my second company that I founded was called Superfan, and we started that in 2008. We were originally a destination site where you could become a fan of everything you love, and then we ended up morphing it into more of, a, more of an agency model where we built social games and Facebook apps for, uh, for some companies like MTV. We did the Jersey Shore game and worked with Universal and WB Records for Lady Gaga and Britney, and uh, CBS built the official games for Survivor and NCIS. So we started to really build some, some DNA around building Facebook apps and social games. Using all the mechanics that you guys are using now with badges and quizzes and leveling up and, and leaderboards and all that good stuff. So one of our more popular games that we built, we called Battles. And what the Battles did is pitted two different entities against each other. In this case, it's who's a better author. Okay, so it's easy to do this because you can pick, you know, are you, are you more into kind of classics or more into to, to mysteries or whatever. One of the other areas that really got hot for us around battles was sports. So for me, I'm a guy who's from Boston, so I'm a big Red Sox fan. So for me, it was easy to say, I love the Red Sox and I hate the Yankees, and I want to battle that, and then I want to get that out in front of all my friends who also might be Red Sox fans. So that was our battles. Now, what happened is Facebook kind of changed the game on us. And this is, uh, we, we had started Superfan, about six months later, Facebook started to push the, the like button and starting to catalog everyone's interest with likes. So we quickly realized that Facebook is a platform and that we needed to adapt. So that's why we went, moved from the destination site onto Facebook and adapted to, uh, to be able to, to leverage that platform. The other lesson that we learned is that with the battles, they were often driven um, by kind of hit-driven periodic um, placements where it might be a weekend that got really hot because maybe two football teams were playing each other. So you had these hockey sticks. And that's not value-driven growth. When you build these games, you don't want the hockey stick, because as quick as it comes up, it may come right back down. You want that perfect kind of 45 degree angle. Uh, maybe it's a hockey stick, it's starting to look like a hockey stick, but you want that retention there, or our battles were kind of going up and down depending on the game of the week. So you really want to build for value-driven growth. So then we pivoted and um, started the third company, which is the current company, Branch Out. Again, the largest social network, uh, professional network on Facebook. And um, in the last year, it's, we've had a, a fun year. We've raised $24 million. We've got millions of users. We're in 60 countries and 10 languages. And what we've tried to do is bring game dynamics into an industry that you wouldn't expect that to be in, and that's professional networking. So we've done things like badges. So some of the badges you could you could give people would be the skilled hacker or the exceptional accountant. These are fun, ego-driven, they're free to send, they're fun, colorful, they go in the activity stream and, and you know, stand out, and we've had some nice success with these. Related to that, we gave our first million users the early adopter badge and um, asked them to come and claim it and sent out this, uh, this letter to all of them. And another related to badges where you want to send out um, kind of kudos would be our endorsements product, which is um, a recommendation. Um, our endorsements are 140 characters each, so they're tweetable. And they take a little more work than a badge would, but you've got the reciprocity factor of when I take the time to endorse you and, and write that sentence or two and I send that to you, you feel good about it. It costs me very little of my time, but you've got that reciprocity that you want to give that back to me, and that helps build out my professional profile. So endorsements have been great. Levels. So obviously all of you social gaming gurus know about levels. Our levels are a little different. What we're trying to do is motivate people to invite more. So for us in, in professional networking, it's a, uh, it's a network-driven business where you've got the network effect of the larger your network, the more powerful it becomes. Right? So we want people inviting as many people as possible. Obviously, we want invites, but also we want uh, people to have a bigger network because then it becomes more powerful. So our leveling up isn't really task-oriented like it might be in a game. It's about how many connections that you have within Branch Out. We also uh, follow that up with leaderboards so you can see 
your active connections, who, uh, who's at the top of the leaderboard based on connections, network, or how many companies you are uh, associated with. And then you can also check that box on the side, include friends of friends to see where you stack up against the entire audience of Branch Out. So these are traditional gaming techniques, again, that we're applying to a non-gaming industry. So battles. So this is also on Branch Out. Hopefully you recognize this from five minutes ago. So we were doing battles. We showed who's a better author. What we tried to do here is bring that same concept back three years later. You know, with Superfan, we had millions and millions of people doing the battles. Again, a lot of them were sports-oriented that really took off for us. In this case, what we did with battles is, who would you rather work with? Who's more creative? Who's more analytical? The issue, though, is that although it's fun, you have to choose between two friends. Some people like it, some people didn't like that because um, although we did not send it to the loser and it only went to the friends page, um, they felt bad about choosing uh, one of their friends where the Red Sox Yankees, I'm gonna choose the Red Sox all day and I don't feel bad. So the other thing that happened here is that we had hundreds of thousands of people taking these and joining Branch Out and that was great for user acquisition, but then you have to think about retention long term. We were bringing people in using these battles, and a lot of people were coming in, playing a game, and not necessarily understanding that this is a professional network, which is a little more serious. So the big lesson behind all of that is that context is everything. So you don't want to force these, game, uh, these games within, uh, within your vertical. What you want to do is make sure that it fits, that the user knows if they're coming in through a game into a non-gaming uh, you know, non vertical like professional networking, the reason that they're there. In, in our case, they're there to build a professional network and not necessarily to play a game. It was great for user acquisition in the short term, but of course we're building a long-term business. We need to make sure that there's a uh, continuous transition between a game and what they're doing on Branch Out. So what we did is um, we, had, you know, we, we had a lot of traffic from that and that was great and it started to die down and we, uh, we were getting feedback from people not knowing what to do at Branch Out. So we said, let's, let's take it out from the dashboard and see what happens. And what happened was this. And if, if, you, if you look back here prior in time, you would have saw you know, the, the first spike and then that came down. And then when we, when we took that off the dashboard, I would say that we clarify the value proposition of what Branch Out does. And we took that off the dashboard and instead put a, just a regular invite module that says grow the power of your network, invite your friends. And this is what happened with the numbers. People understood that um, this is a professional network, it's not a game, and you put the invite module. So you know, in the short term, we were able to gain a lot of users, and then longer term, we actually did better once people realized what we were doing with Branch Out. So the, uh, the lesson there is focus on the mechanics, not the game. Don't try to force gaming mechanics uh, or, or don't try to force a game inside a vertical that doesn't belong there. So again, talking about gamification and non-gaming industries and examples of that, I imagine most of you are using these sites, Foursquare and GoWall are obvious ones, checking in, becoming a mayor, that's a game, but it's nice to be able to get deals and that helps improve people's lives because you save money. Causes and uh, charity water, have done a great job at bringing gaming dynamics into charities to be able to raise money. They're doing great. Uh, Lumosity, actually, Tim, um, Tim's an investor and I'm an advisor in Lumosity. They're, they're bringing gaming uh, to, uh, to brain games, which, although that's a game, I would say it's more education and keeping your mind sharp, and, and that is improving people's lives. And Clout, um, you know, Clout, your online reputation score, uh, this week they were giving people uh, invites to Spotify, if you had a high enough Clout score. And then with Branch Out, you know, I talked about and, and trying to bring gamification to get all these people in there. And then for us, um, you know, people are getting jobs and, and uh, you know, finding work and finding leads. So trying to bring gamification to improve people's lives. Okay. So the people in this room, you guys are the innovators. You guys are the experts. And you are a small sliver of all the technologists out there that are building uh, great technologies on the internet. You guys are in a really, really hot market. So whether you're building social games to entertain the hundreds of millions of people that are using your games every month, uh, which is great, or you're applying that to non-gaming industries, um, you guys are the experts. So I mean, I'm really excited to see what you're gonna do, um, hopefully beyond just what we have in social gaming today, because there's so much more that can be done beyond entertainment, to educate people, to raise money for charities, to get people jobs. I mean, all these wonderful verticals that can use your help. So 
keep innovating, keep being inspired, keep building awesome stuff. Thank you. And then I'm, I'm pretty sure we've got time if anyone has any questions that I can answer about branch out or non-gaming industries. Covered it all. That was one. Yep. Sorry. Can I ask you how do you make money out of it? Sure. So for Branch Out, we have a couple different revenue streams. One, we have job postings, which is similar to like Monster or LinkedIn. We also have a product where we bring jobs from a website and bring them onto Facebook because HR people don't typically know how to do that. And then next month, we're launching a product that allows uh, recruiters and sales professionals to be able to search the Branch Out database, similar to what you'd be able to do on LinkedIn, just leveraging the Facebook platform instead of LinkedIn. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else? Yes? How do you get the badges? So the badges, um, you, just, you, would, you, know, you install Branch Out in one of the links from our dashboard is a list of about 60 different badges. You choose a badge, and then we show you all your Facebook friends to be able to send that to, and then it goes on their wall. Yeah, yeah. I think Facebook actually has a limit on 25 wall posts per day, so you could give up to 25 per day. Um, and, I mean, they're, they're fun. They're, um, they're, they're a good way to just kind of give kudos to your coworkers. People appreciate them. And, um, and it's also a good way, obviously, to get users in the site, because when you give that to someone, they want to check it out and hopefully give more. Thanks. Um, first, are, are you guys hiring? And then, uh, you know, it probably makes sense to hire people with product shops out of the games market. Has that been hard to do? Is it getting easier? Are you looking for talent? And, and uh, would this be a good source for that? <laughs> so uh, we are absolutely looking for talent. So we, um, we've doubled the size of the team in the last two months. I plan to double the size of the team again in the next three or four months, uh, moving into much bigger office space to, uh, to allow us to grow the team. So we're definitely looking for people that have gaming experience, um, whether on the back end side with engineering or the front end with product um, or analytics. So we're definitely, definitely uh, recruiting uh, heavily, and uh, especially people out of gaming. So um, as an example, our um, head of enterprise products is from Playdom, and she's also a former recruiter. So she has both the, the recruiting background and the, uh, the product management from Playdom. So she's kind of that perfect mix for us. Um, but if you, are, if you are interested in what we're doing, send me an email, Rick at Branch out or Armarini at Twitter. Um, we are definitely hiring. OK? Thank you very much.